Hello, this is Victor Campos for PMD Interactive. Let's learn how to set up Visual Studio 2017 for creating Android apps. So first thing I want to do is go to visualstudio.com and download the installer. When I get to visualstudio.com, I have various options. I want the Visual Studio IDE, a rich IDE with advanced debugging. So I'm going to select Community Edition. That's the free one. I'll get a pop-up to save a relatively small file, which then I need to run. So I first have to agree to the privacy statement and license terms. The installer will check my system to see if I meet the requirements. It should go without saying that the newer your computer is, the more powerful it is, with a better CPU, RAM, and hard drive, the easier it'll be to develop apps. Because you're going to use a powerful editor to compile your code to every device. You'll be able to create Android apps, iOS apps, Windows apps, Mac OS apps. And the more powerful your computer is, the more effective you'll be in that goal. Eventually, you'll get to this workloads screen. Depending on what you're trying to create, you'll see that Visual Studio has a variety of workloads you can choose from to accomplish that. If you're interested in creating Android apps, you want to scroll down and find Mobile Development with JavaScript. Build Android, iOS, and Windows apps using tools for Apache Cordova. Before I select it, notice the installation is 602 megabytes. Once I select Mobile Development with JavaScript, this jumps up to 1.48 gigabytes. This will install Cordova, various JavaScript and TypeScript language support, JavaScript diagnostics, and mobile development with JavaScript core features. There are a variety of options that are turned off that are optional, but the recommendation here is to select Android SDK Setup, which will also activate Java SE Development Kit. Those are the two that you need to be able to fully compile your Android apps. The others are optional. This workload assumes you have a physical Android device to use. You're going to plug in your Android device to test your apps. If you don't have a physical Android device, you'll need to then activate Google Android Emulator. And once you do that, it'll also activate the Intel Hardware Accelerated Execution Manager. Notice how this installation has jumped up to 23.45 gigabytes. And if I were to select every optional component, of mobile development with JavaScript, I'm going to get 29.51 gigabytes of space usage. So again, you only need to have Android SDK setup and Java SE development kit. That comes in at 5.26 gigabytes. Still pretty hefty, but you'll be able to get started right out of the box. I'll select install. So here, depending upon your internet connection, you may be staring at this progress bar for a while. It's going to connect, after all, to the Microsoft servers and download over five gigabytes of components. So go grab a coffee and it'll be done in no time. And via the magic of editing, a 15 minute download becomes a 15 second one. So here, Visual Studio has been downloaded and installed, and I will launch it. The first thing I'll see is that it'll ask me to sign in to a Microsoft account. You can skip this for now, but it will ask you in 30 days to sign in. The software is completely free, but it is tied to a Microsoft account. So Hotmail, Outlook.com, even your Xbox account is good enough to use to sign in. I'm going to skip it for now, but definitely sign in eventually. You can choose your environment. Are you dealing with general development, other kinds of development? I would just leave it as general and then a theme of blue. You can change this at any point. We get the getting started screen of Visual Studio with a lot of links and great things to read. Keep up to date with using Visual Studio for mobile development right from this screen. I'll go to the File menu, select New Project. 
On a previous step, I selected mobile development with JavaScript. So that's the kind of template, the kind of project I can create at the moment, a JavaScript project. So choose to save this project wherever you want, give it whatever name you want, and then click OK. I get another welcome screen. Apache Cordova, create apps that run on iOS, Android, and Windows devices and share nearly 100% of your code. So the beauty of using Visual Studio 2017, Community Edition, is that you can use HTML, CSS, and JavaScript to create apps that will run on all devices. Visual Studio basically will compile that code into the appropriate platform, behind the scenes using Apache Cordova. So we've got a project so far now. If I want to see what it looks like, I can select here Simulate in the browser using an LG G5 Android device. So I'll simply click to run in the simulator. As you'll see here, this is going to run in debug mode, Android operating system in a web browser, specifically Google Chrome. So you probably already have Google Chrome installed. Visual Studio will open it up and run your project in Chrome to simulate it as if it was in a real Android device. Just wait a moment for it to compile. You may have to enable the firewall, so go ahead and do so. So what I get is the Google Chrome web browser. It starts up. It's simulating a mobile device. Apache Cordova device is ready. I can edit the code of this project. And then I can quickly test the result. Well, this looks like a plain old website, but it's simply running in the simulator. You can, of course, run this on a real device. You're going to need to go find the driver for your device so that it can interface with your computer. I've already installed the Motorola driver for this Motorola testing device, so mine is ready. What I can do is, instead of simulating in a browser, I have the option to run on a device. So I will run on my attached device. Again, you need to have the driver installed. You may get a pop-up on your device that allows you to interface with Visual Studio. You want to agree to that and then just wait. Again, you may get a firewall pop-up that you should allow. Sometimes you have to deploy twice. The first time simply for Visual Studio to recognize your device and then the second time so that it actually loads your app. Subsequent builds will be a lot faster. But again, the beefier computer you have, the more powerful computer you have, the faster this process goes. And here it is. There's that same web project that loaded up a moment ago, and now it's on my device. Device is ready. I can still also edit the code. So here I'm going to change just like I did for the web version. Let's just put anything else. And it changes on the device. So I can easily test and see results on a real device. I'll stop debugging because what I can then do is start to, to create my app. In Visual Studio, I'm able to create apps that access the capabilities of the device you'll see under the Solution Explorer at the right a config.xml file. If you double-click that and then look under Plugins at left, you have a variety of features that you can access. The camera, contacts on the device, the file manager, geolocation, vibration. So you simply activate the plugin and then you're going to be able to use vibration in your project. Well, this is all part of Apache Cordova. You can visit the website, cordova.apache.org, to read the full documentation of how to use HTML, CSS, and JavaScript to create mobile apps for every device. I can go read the documentation for the plugin Vibration and see the code that I need to write. Navigator.vibrate time. So using that JavaScript code in my project, 
which is found in the www folder, I can write and edit JavaScript to cause my app to vibrate. I'll say as soon as my app loads up, I'm going to have it vibrate for five seconds. 5,000 milliseconds, five seconds. I'll save that and I'll deploy it to my device again. There it is, a five second vibration time, simply by writing some JavaScript. That's a nice parlor trick, but what if I want to accomplish something meaningful? Well, Visual Studio lets you quickly add HTML and JavaScript frameworks so you can get up and running very quickly. Here's an example. I'm going to use the popular jQuery mobile. You can go to Project, Manage NuGet Packages. I have no packages installed so far, so I'm going to Browse. I'm going to search for jQuery.mobile. And we have jQuery Mobile from the official jQuery project team. I will select to install. It will tell me what dependencies I need. Very useful. I also require jQuery 1.8. So I'll install that. This will connect to the appropriate repository and begin downloading the files. So after a little while, you'll have jQuery Mobile installed. And what you can do with this is write some simple HTML to create some interfaces for your apps. The app mainly lives in the index.html file, which is inside of the www folder. You also have a folder of CSS and scripts, which is JavaScript. After installing jQuery Mobile via NuGet, what you need to do, you'll have to move jQuery Mobile 145.min.js and jQuery 1.8.min.js into the scripts folder of the project. Then from the content folder, you'll move that images folder as well as jQuery mobile 145.min.css into the CSS folder. What this will allow you to do is to create an interface. So here in the index.html file, I'm going to get rid of what's already there. This div here, lines 18 to 24. Instead, I'm going to create a new section with a header, an article, and a footer. This is HTML5, but via jQuery Mobile, we are then able to add a data role, which is an attribute of page. This is a section, this is a page in our document. Let me zoom in a little bit so it's a little easier to, to read. Header gets a data role attribute of header. Any content in this header will then appear nice and big at the top of the screen. The footer gets a data role attribute of footer. And any content here will appear at the bottom, like a copyright notice. We should also add the data position attribute fixed so that it stays at the bottom of the screen. And then article will have a role of main and a class of UI-content so that any content that I put in this area will appear in the main body. In order for this to work properly, I next need to connect to these libraries. So up on the header block, line 15, I'm going to add a new link, rel style sheet, href linking to the CSS file in the CSS folder, jQuery Mobile 145. Next, before the line 30, I will add a script with a source of jQuery. Lastly, a script reference to jQuery 145. This will activate the data role features so that my app looks more interesting like a real interface. What I should also do is, in the CSS folder, clean out that CSS file. This has a lot of styling that I don't really need, especially everything after the body, line 33. Some of this other stuff, like the background color, I don't need that, and the redundant font definitions. So I'm going to delete lines 9 through 28, 
and leave these. So this simplified CSS file is better for me to then customize my app later on. The CSS file is the design of my project. The index is the main structure. And then later, the JavaScript index.js file is the main interactivity. Let me compile the code to run it on the device and see what I've got. So this is just a starting point, but via Visual Studio 2017, jQuery, and jQuery Mobile, we can create a great Android, iOS, or Windows app pretty quickly. Be sure to subscribe to us to see more videos on the next steps in creating your mobile app. This has been Victor for PMD Interactive.